Hi there, Louisa here from allaboutstamping.co.uk and today I've got gorgeous little boxes um, that hold two Yankee candles and they've um, got a little um, like a sniff hole so I've cut out a little hole um, if you're going to put something that is like sweet something you can always put um, a little window sheet over that so yeah, two little boxes, um, and today I'm going to do something a little bit unusual. I've done these in Imperial, um, and I have started now to do things in metric, um, and today I'm going to do the metric version. Um, they're exactly the same size, or nearly exactly the same size, um, but I thought I'd do a, a metric version, and I've realised that one's upside down. Uh, so this one's uh, Flirty Flamingo, because it went with... The little tea lights and these are Yankee Candle tea lights and then I've done a Knight of Navy version and I've actually used I'll tip it over so I've actually used the um, Bird Ballad Suite um, Free as a Bird and uh, I love it I haven't done anything remotely bird like <laughs> I've used some of the little smaller stamp I've done tone on tone so today these are the three colours I've got in my stash I don't know why I've got pink, blue and green but they were just in my um, drawer that I hold goodies for things. Um, and I had these gorgeous, I think they're like a mint flavour, they smell gorgeous. Um, so, looking at my cardstock, um, I'm going to do purpose as for these. So, got a piece of paper. Um, so, the, this one, because it's metric, um, it measures... Uh, 15, uh, 15 centimetres and 12 centimetres. If you are an imperial, you will cut it to 5 and 3 quarters by 4 and 3 quarters. Um, so that's it. And we're going to do some stamping on it um, first. Now, these aren't exactly a like for like conversion because when I was doing it, it when I was converting, it was giving me like. 1.9 and I just thought that's too faffy so yeah so grab my blocks so I'm going to use the um, free as a bird and using these little flowers here and actually I might use that leaf given that we're doing green <laughs> um, yeah so we're having the first day in a long time that actually hasn't rained. It is beautiful. And I even had an ice cream for my lunch. So, I did have, oh, it's here. <laughs> I was going to say, I did have purpose as ink. So, when you are doing um, stamp, when you're doing your own DSP, which is what I'm doing here always start oh doesn't that look fabulous um with your largest image because then you can fill in then with your um smaller images um rotate the stamp or actually sometimes it's easy just to rotate the piece of paper and come on and off the paper as well so I've got my stamping scrub next to me to my right. Because this is such a gorgeous stamp, I don't think use my stamp. So I want to put it straight back in the box. So and I love I just love tone on tone. So I've got the flower now. Doesn't that look heaven? Quite a bit darker than the other ones. I like it. I hope I've picked up the right ink. Oh well, it looks pretty anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, I tell you what, with stamping up colours, you will never want for a colour because you have them all. And I have yet to find something that I couldn't find in a stamping up colour. <laughs> so, 
See, stamping up has ne hasn't failed me yet. Sorry about that. So, yes. I've lost my train of thought. I answered that and of course there wasn't anybody on the other line. And was it annoyingly? But hey. That's life. So we are. Even though I am going to cut a section of this out. I still rather do as much of it as I can in when it's whole. And I think I mentioned it before. Um, always do this before you do your scoring. Because um, if you try to do that, score it and then do it, the stamp will skip where you stored it and it where you scored it, and it just it won't look very nice. Okay. I think I want something up in that corner. All right, so that's looking good. So I'm going to put this away. Put the block away. Right. So I'm going to use, unfortunately, it is retired. No, I'm, but I'm going to use a uh, stamping trimmer. Okay. Because it's got a scoreboard on it. But if you've got one with that scoreboard scoring tool, um, actually, let me show you. Um, you can actually do the same thing. Get a stylus and you can just score in the groove with a stylus. Right, let's get that where you can see. There we go. Hopefully, you can see that. Okay, so you're going to start on the long side and you're going to score it at two. So I'm in centimetres now. You know what, actually, because I'm not used to doing that. Hey, I've got a fat one. I find, oh, ah, it's escaping. So, score it at two. Six and a half. use that now for a bit more of a grip. <laughs> Six and a half. Eight and a half. It's gone very deep because I'm not used to eight and a half. Thirteen and fifteen. Just thirteen. <laughs> this is the notes I've got. <laughs> I've put thirteen and fifteen. Fifteen is the size. I don't think I need to score at fifteen. <laughs> but all the measurements will be on the block. So if you're in inches, it is. If you're in period, it's uh, three quarters, two and a half. Three and a quarter and five. Okay. And then you're going to turn, you're going to score it at two. And ten. And in metric, that is three quarters and four. But again, all, make sh all, all the measurements will be on the blog. Right, okay. So now we are using, um, and I've done it um, leaving it flat and burnishing it and then cutting it. I found cutting it first, cutting the aperture out first before you burnish is easier. So we're using the um, stitched nestled dies, which I love. Um, and I've gone for 
it must be like the third size but anyway fits in there so I'm going to line that up and I'm going to grab my big shot so I keep my big shot under my desk probably not very helpful <laughs> so decide which is going to be your top and which is going to be your bottom they're both exactly the same at the moment so it doesn't actually matter so I've got my magnetic platform plate and I have decided these are new plates so I've decided that I'm going to keep one plate for the cutting plate just so it makes it a bit easier so decide which you like as your top that might look nice as the top and because this is a thinnish one I like to send it in on my diagonal and I am new to the magnetic plate and boy why I didn't get one ages ago so you're just going to line that up in the middle if you haven't got the magnetic plate just use some low tack tape oh that's shifted hang on Um, and the reason why I preferred doing this when it was flat before I burnished it, it was just that it laid a bit flatter. Um, it keeps moving. Um, but yeah, if you'd rather do it, burnish it all in one piece, do it, you can do it either way. So we don't need to go all the way through. And what I love about these stitch framelits is they will cut out a stitch, but they will also leave, like on here, they will also leave, I'm hoping you can see that, oh yeah, they'll also, they're also leaving a stitch on the bit you're cutting out from, so that's where this idea came from. I think that's cut all the way through, yeah. Okay. To pop this back Oop. so I don't lose it and of course now I'm stuck to the magnetic <laughs> I'm stuck to the magnetic right, right so we can fold and burnish I just want to get that one in there because I didn't, didn't do that one very strong because not, not used to scoring on that one but also I thought it was really not, I've so not done that straight <laughs> oh well but I so like the idea of this having a little um, you know a little hole in the front where you could smell it so if you're making handmade soaps or handmade tea lights actually because it's three quarters of an inch in depth or two centimeters so don't know what other tea lights I'll hold but I'm assuming these are standards I don't know maybe someone who makes candles could chime in and I've lost my scissors um, yeah because I don't have any idea how to make a candle any more than I would fly to the moon so where you've got your little triangles, uh, triangles, <laughs> where you've got your squares, dippy demo alert, I think, you're going to cut straight up the rectangle and wedge into the square. And I'm cutting it out the score line. So I've made this box numerous times before and you know sometimes it will be a specific project, sometimes it will be like lately I've been trying to um, do projects that use like 12 oh, 
full sheet of 12 by 12 DSP um, or as close to because I don't want a load left over at the end of the, of the catalogue when they all retire although I still find old DSP really useful for um doing samples with and actually <laughs> that's why we happen to have two already because <laughs> I designed the box and then for some reason I thought oh I'll stamp it and I'll make and then if it's a perfect fit which hardly ever happens by the way especially if I'm doing it full of something I thought, oh, I'll cut that out and I'll stamp it. And then if it's okay and it doesn't need any tweaking, I've got an extra box. And lo and behold, <laughs> it fits. Or it fitted. But I think I put it on my business Facebook page, which is all about stamping. Go check it out. Um, I put on... Do you think that on my Facebook group? Both of which you should go and check out. Um, that I use my grid paper for working out box um, nets. So that's what I've got. So I've cut up, I've cut straight up those and waited until I've just done that on all six squares. So we are going to get some tape. tape. Now, if you're doing paper, I would normally say use snail, but I'm not sure I would with candle. I mean, they're not dead heavy, um, but yeah. But I am a fan of Yankee Candles. Oh, I am. I don't know why I should have used snail, really. Because <laughs> now I've got to pick all that off. It would be painful. So, um. You can, oh, there. <laughs> it's hiding. I was looking for my pick. I was like, I know I put it back in my pot. So, yes, I'm trying to keep my desk tidy because I'm filming this on Friday. And I've got my live at five on my Facebook page. So, I'm trying to keep it tidy for that so that I can just go but I'm also trying to get ahead of myself because the past couple of weekends I've been filming at the weekend because um, I've been a bit I haven't really been ahead of myself um, so yeah I mean I know I'll spend time in the craft room but I kind of want I want a weekend of me well not of me but you know what I mean just a weekend of chilling although actually I find it very relaxing being in my craft room right so I've taken all the tape off so that's obviously going to be your lid so we're going to build the base first so I've done these a hundred times nothing special and this is as I'm sure you've gathered by now a box for the lid attached. I can't think of a better name for it. I don't know whether anybody else could think of a better name. That's the one that I've come up with. <laughs> I'm sure somebody else will come up with a better name. So I'm taking all of those into the... 
So I've taken four into there and then I've got these two up for the lid. So when it came to the closure of this, I suddenly thought, because this type of box really does need something around it because it gapes a bit. So, oops. So I did it and I thought, hmm. Kind of don't know what to do about the ribbon. So that's why I've gone kind of over the corner. So and I am using the gorgeous scarlet lace trend. How pretty is that? Oh. And this is again part of the bird ballad suite. And I just think it's lush. Um, and I think I preferred it when I did it in a knot. So I'm laying it over one corner and then I'm bringing that round to that side and that round to there and then I can just tie it in a knot. And then I've used the, um, the Everyday Label Punch. Um, but I've trimmed it a bit. And do you know what? This ties beautifully. And the Lord knows I need all the help I can get. <laughs> um, and I had a scrap of Whisper White and I... Oh, it's here. So... Everyday Label Punch, I think that's what it's called. <gasps> Skate, I've forgotten its name. So I'm gonna punch that out. And then you can either do this on your trimmer or with a great big long pair of scissors. I'm gonna cut up here. So I've cut that section out and then I'm gonna cut the same on the other side. So I've got that shape and I found out that the world needs more of you fit just about oops I'm sorry I just knocked the camera um, just about fits so I've got that on a block I've got uh, my pear pizzazz not a colour I use very often but it's lovely love it Pardon my head. You may have to get that quite lined up. And it fits really well nicely. So. Dimension. Um, and on these two. Um, so I actually just stuck a dimension. Kind of on that bit. And then I peeled that off. And then I could that wherever really and yes it does go over the window but you know so I hate you'll give that a try so we've got oh we'll do a size comparison very slightly um, shorter on the in, in blah, blah, the metric as opposed to the imperial I think width wise width wise are pretty the same height they're the same so it's only the length that varies ever so slightly different but you've got metric at uh, imperial um and metric so i hope you'll give this a go um i think these would be fantastic for um little craft fairs because you can get two from a sheet of paper i forgot to say that sorry from an a4 um so quite economical really easy to uh, to do if you're going to do loads of them stamp them first then cut them up and you can kind of do production line. So thank you very much. Um, and I forgot to say as well, all the links to my um, to the products that will go direct to my shop will be in the description. Um, and again, all the measurements will be on my blog. So I hope to see you soon. Bye.